Last week, I did a video on the possibility of the Las Vegas Raiders trading up for quarterback Caleb Williams. Hey, you may not see that coming, and I don't either, but I'm looking at all possibilities right now. We don't even know where the GM's going to be. So here's another possibility. This one has the Chicago Bears keeping their pick and taking Williams, and the Raiders still doing business with them. Last I heard, 2021 first-round pick Justin Fields could be had for a second-round pick. He's been held back by a weak supporting cast, but he has a ton of upside and he's improved every year. The Raiders have everything a quarterback needs and need a mobile quarterback that can make plays off script and throw deep. Fields and Raiders could fit perfectly as each side clearly has what the other needs. One big area the Raiders would help Fields in is pass protection. The Bears aren't very good in that area. With the Bears, Fields is constantly running for his life. Pro Football Focus has him ranked number 23 in the NFL in pass protection. Also, according to Pro Football Focus, the Bears' offensive line gave up 232 pressures, 28 hits, and 29 sacks. The Raiders' offensive line gave up 168 pressures, 24 hits, and 24 sacks this past year. The Bears' offensive line had 18 penalties to 6 for the Raiders' offensive line, too. That's three times more penalties. Both offensive lines play against good competition, too, meaning there are a bunch of guys that can rush a passer in their respective divisions. But what you have to keep in mind here is Fields is far from an easy quarterback to sack while Aiden O'Connell is so easy to sack. I love O'Connell's arm talent, but his best move when the rush comes is finding a soft place to land because he's not going to get away from anyone. So when you look at the numbers versus how much easier O'Connell is to sack, the Raider offensive line is that much better. The other big area the Raiders would help Fields is the weapons they'd have around them. The Bears had the number two rushing team in the NFL in 2023. Fields himself led the team in rushing with 657 yards, but he had some good running backs over there. However, they didn't have a Josh Jacobs over there. I think Pierce coming back means Jacobs will be back too. And of course, to throw the ball to, Fields would have Devontae Adams, who's still the best receiver in the game. He still had over 1,000 yards receiving, despite the fact that Jimmy Garoppolo, the worst quarterback in the NFL this year, and a rookie, was throwing him the ball. Another guy to look forward to would be speedster Trey Tucker. When the other team is doubling Adams, Fields has the arm to get the ball to him and make the other team play everything straight up. Then Adams will get going again. Then with the defense scared of Adams and Tucker, tight end Michael Mayer and possession receiver Jacoby Myers can eat. All Fields had this past season is DJ Moore. Fields is very talented, so I don't see how he can do anything but succeed with the Raiders' weapons. Now we get into how Fields can help the Raiders. The deep ball is an area Fields can really help with that big arm. O'Connell has a big arm too, but his deep ball wasn't good this year. He had an adjusted accuracy percentage of 35.3% on deep balls, while his big time throw percentage was 31.6 and his passer rating was 94. O'Connell was right around the bottom of the league in that department. Fields was fifth in the NFL in adjusted accuracy percentage at 53.8% on deep balls. He was eighth in big time throw percentage at 32.7% and fifth in passer rating on deep balls at 114.6. You can see in games where all those stats translate too. O'Connell missed guys wide open deep, a little too often for me. Yes, he was a rookie, and yes, he did get better as the season went along, but Fields is actually younger than O'Connell, and he's at the top of the league in those categories. Both of these guys should improve, but you can already see how beautiful a deep ball Fields already throws, and he hasn't had his breakout season yet. What would he do with Tucker and Adams? The things Fields can do under pressure would be a big help too. He was 6th in the NFL in adjusted accuracy percentage under pressure at 67.7%. O'Connell was tied for 47th at 60.7%. Fields was 16th in the league in big time throw percentage under pressure at 5.1% while O'Connell was 17th at 4.9%. Fields is number 13 in passer rating under pressure at 72.8% and O'Connell is number 20 at 63.3%. No quarterback consistently throws the ball great under pressure but you have to make something out of nothing to extend drives at times. Around two or three such plays in a game will win for you. The Raiders have to face Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert who can give you those two or three plays. I don't mean just scrambling and throwing on the run either. You gotta be able to fix a broken play with your legs only too. At 6'3", 230 pounds running a 4-4-40, Fields is elusive too so he'll consistently be among the league's leaders in rushing yards for a quarterback. He'd give the Raiders all they need in that department. We're all talking about who the Raiders need to trade up and draft this year, and my pick for that is definitely Jaden Daniels. But what if the Raiders don't need to trade up and draft the guy? The Bears, Washington Redskins, and New England Patriots may not want to make a trade. They may just want the quarterback, leaving the Raiders without a trade partner. 
Well, not all the way without a trade partner because the Bears would definitely want to trade Fields after picking Williams. Maybe the Raiders should take that. There's a ton of untapped potential there. Both Fields and the Raiders seem to have what the other needs too. Thank you for watching. See you next time.